So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to design your own frame. Now, I'm going to cut this into parts. For example, first, we're going to start off with designing the motor holes, which is very important, and how to take into consideration different sizes within the same class. That means if it's a 2306 and a 2207, they'll fit on the arm just fine. I'll show you how to read these specifications, so you'll know even if you use a different size motor, like a 1408 or an 11XX motor, like 1103, and just about everything you're going to need to know to get started into creating your own frames. And again, the playlist will be linked down below, so you can go ahead and check it out so you can easily follow along with the future episodes. Now, this is the first episode, which is the motor holes, and um, we're going to be using a software called Fusion 360, and um, we're going to take a look at the 22XX size and the 23XX size. So we're going to call them 22 motors and the 23 motors, and those are the basic 5-inch motors that we currently use for our quadcopters. And once we have a complete frame, then I'll also show you how to create the profile in order to cut it out on a CNC machine or even 3D printed if you wanted to you can easily do that as well that's what's really cool with fusion 360 now before starting a word from our sponsor PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers that I even use on a daily basis not only to do my projects but also some of the products that I've designed that's currently in the market like the drone mesh VUSB and I'm constantly using them for prototyping and I'm also using their assembly services and they also do have flashing services for specific hardware requirements so it's a really great place to have your PCB manufactured or prototyped. So here we have the Brother Hobby Returner R5 and this is a 2306 sized motor. Now sometime, most of the time they'll have these listed here which is the specifications for them and you want to kind of ignore this unless you need this this is the height specifications we're not going to need that what we need is the bottom this is the most important part here now usually you get either three or four numbers or sometimes even two numbers here so let's understand what these mean here now here we have m3 forget the first number here we don't really need it. or it just says four m3s what that means is these holes right here are M3 size. So they're three millimeter holes that will take the screw into place. So it's not using an M2 or an M4. So now we know that we have to make the holes when we find where they go into a three millimeter size. Now it's good to put them as a 3.2 millimeter. We'll get into that in a tiny bit. Now here we have another two numbers. We have a 16 and a 19. What this means is 16 millimeters and also 19 millimeters. And I'm like, okay, well, what is this reference to? Well, if you take a closer look, we see the 16 millimeter going into this inner dash circle or dotted circle here. And what that's pointing to are these two motor holes absolute center. So this is very important. So the, there's two screws that are going to be on 16 millimeter uh, radius. And then the next is going to be a 19 millimeter radius, which are these two here. Because if we take a closer look at the motor, we see these two are closer together than these two. And this takes into account if your frame only takes 2207 or 2306, that you'll be able to do that with at least two screws. However, I'm going to show you how to do it where it, you know, it's fully compatible with four screws on all of them. Now we know we need a 16 millimeter and a 19 millimeter, and we know that the whole size is going to be three millimeter. Now let's go and open Fusion 360. So here I have a rough draft of a frame arm right now. And what's really important about this is to know the exact center. Now, once you're here, after you created it, you want to get into the sketch mode. Now I like just to press the letter L, which means line, and I'll choose a surface that I want to work on. So there we go. Now I'm in sketch mode, as you can tell on the right here. And what I like to do is just draw a line straight down. This is going to be very important because that's going to be reference. And then I press the escape key to escape the, uh, the line sketching mode. So now what we saw is we needed a 16 millimeter circle and a 19 millimeter circle. So let's get started with the 16 millimeter circle. So we're going to do 16. I just typed 16. I pressed C. So hotkey C. And then here's C again. Now I'm going to do a 19 millimeter circle. So now we have those two, the 19 and the 16 millimeter circles right here. So I'll do this a little bit better so it doesn't kind of confuse you. All right, so we have these two holes. Now I'm going to erase these. Now I just erased the notes to make things a bit more clear. Now what's very important now is that where the motor wires will run, they will not run exactly where a motor screw would be. It will be right in the middle. So since we have the middle now here, and each screw hole, this is very important, is 90 degrees apart from the other one. We have four. So what you can do, for example, a circle is what? 360 degrees. So 300, hopefully all of you know that. And if we do divide that into four segments, then we see that we get 90. And that's where I got the 90 degree offset. So here, there shouldn't be any motor holes. So what we need to do is we're going to need to make a line that's 45 degrees away from here. 
So we can just, you know, bring a line, doesn't matter. I just pressed L and then you can tell that my millimeters is highlighted. Now, if I click tab, then I go into the degrees and now I'm going to set this to 45 degrees. And that's going to give me, this is where our first motor hole screw are go, are, is going to go. And now I'm going to do the other four as well. So we're going to go here and then I'm going to go up here. I'm going to press tab again and I'm going to click 45. And there we go. We have, this is where our second screws are going to go. Then I'm going to click the L again, just go to this side. I'm going to press tab. Now it's 135 degrees and eventually you'll figure that out. So the left side is going to be always 135 degrees. Again, tab 135, boom. <clears throat> now we know exactly where the motor holes will go. So I'm going to remove this center line now and just all of these to make things a bit much to make things a little bit more clear here. Okay, so we should be left with something that looks like this now. We're also missing another hole in the middle, which we'll cover in a bit because we can leave that for later. So our first motor screw is going to be here. So we can click the C and then we're gonna go make a circle. And now I like to make them 3.2 millimeters. Now we just read that the motor will be using M3 screws, which is three millimeter screws. So the hole on the frame, I want it to be 3.2 millimeter, uh, just for tolerance reasons, if I'm, you know, CNCing it and maybe I used, or the bit was a little bit smaller. So th this is what I usually do. So 3.2 millimeters, and I'm gonna click enter. So now we have our first hole, but this is on the 16 millimeter uh, circle. So we're gonna go to the other side as well and do the same thing. So we're gonna, we're just gonna find the exact center where they meet, press C, click on it, and put 3.2, 3.2, boom. So now we have our two holes, and the other two holes were on the 19 millimeter mark. So we're gonna go here, and we're gonna say 3.2 again, because it's just gonna be the same size all over. And then here, we're gonna do the same thing again, 3.2. And now like this, that motor will fit perfect. However, we don't know the orientation. Maybe the motor wire is going to come from the right right here or it's going to come from the left because obviously it's not symmetric. So the next thing that I like to do, and you'll probably see other companies do as well, is go to the radius that doesn't have a hole on it. For example, we have 16 here and this is 19 and it doesn't have a hole. So I will go ahead and create another hole here, which is a 3.2. And then I would go and create another one here, which because obviously there isn't one. So I'm going to go 3.2. 3.2 and then I'm going to go on this one right here and I'm going to make 3.2 and now we can see we have two holes for each size and this is going to be absolutely fine because most of the frames actually do this there we go and now what some people do is you can draw a straight line through here so let me, let, let's actually make sense of this right now so we can say E which will extrude the arm so we can get a 3D view of what really happened. Obviously, we're not going to we're not going to need these to be holes, neither of these. And there we go. So and if we extrude it a little bit, then we see now we have our motor holes into place. You might have seen this on a couple frames, but we can also run the lines to have them be much cleaner and just look overall better. So I'm just going to control Z this and we're going to come back to drawing here. So now since we are done with these two circles, we can actually go ahead and just delete them. Just click on them, delete, and they're gone. And we can also do the same for these as well. So there we go. And now we have our motor screws into place. Now, the next thing I like to do is the circle that's right in the middle. This has to be a hole for the C-clip or whatever it is that's hanging down from the motor to actually spin. Now this could be anywhere between 7.5 or seven to eight millimeters. I'll, I prefer to put it at 7.5 to you know 7.9 millimeters is going to be fine. You can make this smaller if you wanted like a perfect tolerance for your motor and it'll increase the overall structural integrity of the arm itself from breaking here. However, I've never had a frame break from here, but yeah, it could be different. So here we're basically done. And then we can do is we could just create lines that'll go through from here to here, or you can just leave it as is and add a fillet later. So what do I mean by that? Well, what we can do now is we're going to go here and here. I'm going to select both of them and then I'm going to press E so we could extrude. And here's three millimeter arm, for example. And now you see it's starting to look like a drone frame. So we can do something with these here. We can press the F key, click on this, and we can click on all of these interior ones together. So we get the perfect, so we get them all to be the same here. And this is a fillet, which is going to push that part in for us. So we're going to go here and we're going to go here and here. And I'm pressing control every time I click one. And then what we can do is just, you know, smoothen that out. 
And there you go. You can smooth that out as you please. And that's going to be perfect. Enter. And voila. We have our first drone frame. And it was just that simple. And that's going to fit every 22 sized class motor, 23 sized class motor. And you shouldn't have any issues because you can tell 16 and 19. And we have basically two holes now and two holes now. So you can fit this any orientation you want. For example, here is a T motor. This is the 2207 Black Edition. Now, the 20, see, this is very important as well. The 2207 motor from T motor just uses a 16 radius circle. So it's very good that we did both all over. This way, all four screws will fit into place just fine. So if we brought this motor into place, it'll fit perfect. It'll fit, the screw will be towards the center part of these holes here because that was a 16 millimeter. And we also added a 0.2 extra tolerance for the hole. So, you know, you could play with it back and forth and that'll fit perfect. And this is how you create these motor holes for whatever size you want. Now, let's just take another example. I don't think we're going to create it, but I'll show you, for example, a 14 size motor. This is a 1408 from, I think, HGLRC right now. And obviously we don't need the top, we don't need these dimensions, you could use them for something else. And this gets really important here. So here, they're using a 12 millimeter radius. So yeah, so they're using a 12 millimeter radius all around, and it's M2 screws. So the hole, instead of M3, how we created those holes, this would be two millimeter holes. So M2, there's four of them, so there's four holes, and it's gonna use M2 screws, very important. And the radius is 12 millimeters here. And that would be a much easier thing to do. But you also have to keep in mind that you want to avoid the center of having a motor screw, and they should all be 90 degrees apart from each other. And then you have yourself a perfect setup for your motor and template, which you can use for the other ones. And as you can see, it was just really that simple. There's really nothing to it in that perspective. Later on, we'll get into the frame design, frame size, and just the tolerances and how to import and make sure they align and how, you know, you could see how everything fits together and even adding, you know, carbon fiber model on top of it. So you can see how it's going to look like and even import like run cam micros and stuff. Uh, but we're going to do that one step at a time. And um, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. This is very important and hopefully it gets traction because if it doesn't, then I'm not going to upload these as much as I would like to. And also make sure you subscribe, like, and check out the links down below. Just click on them. That really greatly supports the channel. And also do have a Patreon, which I have a bunch of giveaways like the QX7 and the IOM ways. And the, I mean, the IOM ways are done, but the new Sky Zones and the Sky Zone O2s. So I'll be doing a lot of giveaways for everybody, like premium giveaways. And, and that's it, guys. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, the notification, the links. Just do everything down there. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.